Welcome back to Gold Derby. I'm Christopher Rosen. I'm so pleased to be joined by Kramer Morgenthau, a six-time Emmy nominee whose latest feature is the hit film Creed 3. Just an awesome movie. Uh, Kramer, thank you for doing this. This is your third film with Michael B. Jordan. I know you did Fahrenheit 451 and Creed 2, where he was the actor, obviously. And now here he's the actor and the director. And I guess, like, yeah, how has your relationship evolved from, you know, the first time you guys met versus, like, getting to work together on this film in such an intimate capacity? Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's been a beautiful kind of friendship and, uh, you know, professional relationship that we met on Fahrenheit 451, the first film we did together, an HBO film, um, this, uh, very cool, uh, dystopian movie. And we just, you know, bonded on that. He really, you know, even back then had a very strong interest in, the camera and cinematography and filmmaking and um and then we went on together to creed 2 um in 20 i think 2018 uh in philadelphia and um you know the relationship just grew there and the friendship and um and then when it came time to do creed 3 it just seemed like a natural um uh, fit for both of us to do do the picture together his first time out as a director and um you know i was uh you know we already had a familiarity so it wasn't like you know one less uh new thing for michael to figure out um and uh we just had a lot of creative uh similarities as well this film i love uh because it feels like such a, a leap, I would say, compared, not even, like, I love these Creed movies. I love, like, the Rocky movies, like, but I felt like this is presenting the fights in a way that I had not really seen before. And I know, like, you guys used IMAX. I think this is, like, maybe the first sports movie to actually use IMAX cameras, too. Yeah, yeah. So when you guys were going in those early conversations, like, how did you kind of, what were they like? Like, what were you and Michael going for, I guess, or in terms of visually how to present, like, boxing in a Creed film but also make it feel unique to this creed film you know that kind of thing yeah i mean it's um that was definitely the challenge was to you know here is a franchise that is i think something like 60 50 60 years old <clears throat> it's a genre a picture or a subgenre picture of boxing <clears throat> excuse me it's a subgenre picture um that everybody has seen before also uh you know an underdog story um that kind of harkens back to the original rocky one um the underdog this time being his antagonist uh diamond dame but still you know um this rivalry but how do you how do you say something different with this genre um and how do you you know visually you know approach it in a way that that's fresh um and i had you know just come off of doing creed 2 so i you know it was a rare opportunity for me to do something that i had just done you know five years prior and now take that experience and push it even further uh so it was kind of a you know it's kind of really special to be able to do that i've never shot the same uh you know picture uh, a sequel twice so um and michael just came you know jumping out of the gate with all kinds of ideas based on his you know <clears throat> love of anime and um love of you know action movies and and that kind of thing and uh and then also his deep um his deep understanding of his own character um you know character work was something he didn't need to do because he was already there um but uh you know deep understanding of story and um sort of pop culture and fashion and um you know what's uh what's going on today you know in uh in pop culture was sort of it's very it's a very of the moment kind of picture so 
you mentioned like the anime. I think that's like one of the cool parts about the fights. It's like you were saying, like this is a move franchise that's like got a lot of years on it, certainly, but it's still obviously kicking at a high level based on this film. And then also just like in general, audiences I think know what boxing movies look like and all this. But this is again, like this was stuff I like had actually not really seen before in the genre. And certainly even in like I think using like the anime style maybe like is part of the reason why I'm not the biggest a- anime fan myself or even awareness of it. But I was like, I knew it, I knew it, you know, enough to be like, that's kind of like what, what this is going for. And I guess for you, yeah. How do you take like that as like an idea and like translate it to the images that we see in the film basically? Yeah. Um, for sure you know it's uh i mean i can give an example of you know a a sequence at the end which was michael's vision in the last fight um this ultimate showdown between him uh him being the protagonist uh adonis creed and diamond dame and they have this sort of you know um i think it's like fight of the century or i think they call it the battle of los angeles you know uh Diamond Dame is from, you know, uh, Crenshaw and, um, you know, uh, Adonis Cree is basically Beverly Hills in a way. And um, so sort of like this, uh, you know, people coming from different classes, but yet they've had this childhood connection and then they have this huge fallout over, you know, this childhood trauma and how do you kind of take that out on the boxing mat and, and do it in a very surrealistic way without words and just, you know, images. And it was kind of like a silent film in a way that it goes into. I'm talking, we we'll call it this sequence, the void, which is, you know, round 11 of this final fight that takes place at Dodger stadium, which is also a very epic place for it to happen boxing matches don't really happen at Dodger stadium. They do, they have in the past historically, and there has been concerts there, but um, to use this venue, like a, you know, a gladiator fight. And um, we just, you know, we went into a whole different visual language just for this one act of this, this one round, I should say Uh, the rounds sort of are like acts of a, of a play, but anyway, um, so that was one example. And then there are other examples within the fights where they're just hyper subjectivity, which is kind of borrowed from anime and um, more abstracted kind of uh, compositions and um, just trying to push the language a bit um, to, you know, uh, not just bring something fresh for the sake of it, but to, you know, bring a little bit of Michael's michael's voice as a director and i think he really crushed it you know when he really brought something he had just all kinds of ideas and i think that he's been um a director in training his whole life you know a 16 year old on the on the set of uh you know the wire and he's been always paying attention to what the camera is and this was his chance and it, it he really you know I think it was one of the more successful uh, movies in the uh, in the whole Rocky franchise. So, yeah, I mean, I agree. I think it's like a great he he does a great job. You mentioned like that they have a shared history. Obviously, like him and Dame, uh, the, Adonis and Dane have obviously shared history and stuff. And so the film does flash back to those scenes. Was there like I think those are taking place in the early two thousands, I guess, is that right? Based on the timeline or late nineties, maybe, or whatever. Yeah. 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 It's early. Yeah. So early two thousands, probably. There's a period piece in the early two thousands. So like, yeah. 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 How did you guys approach that? Cause I thought that's like, cool. Cause it's like, again, like (laughs) it's very specific. It feels like, and has like a lot of choices, but I guess, yeah. How did you kind of approach that and like kind of want to make that look? Uh, Well, visually we made a change in the lenses that we use. We went to spherical lenses. Um, versus the anamorphic lenses that most of the movie was shot in uh so there was kind of a change in look there um their texture shifts in the kind of the way that the movie is uh let's just say the film stock we shot on even though it wasn't shot on film although we did shoot we did shoot some film for that period we shot like hand cranked 
uh, movie camera to get a kind of more impressionistic um, texture and feeling for some of the violence that was happening in the group home. Um, and, uh, you know, all the art direction um, was, you know, very uh, carefully um, curated from that time period. And I think from probably from uh, MBJ's, uh, you know, being a kid at that age himself. Mm -hmm. So I think he was probably around that age yeah. at that time. So it's his life. It's kind of his life, you know, it's, yeah. so, I mean, not those things didn't happen to him, but he did, uh, you know, um, become extremely famous, um, in his lifetime. And, um, and, and is living this kind of larger than life celebrity life now, which is what Di which is what Adonis Creed is. And then, yeah. but he has this connection to this past. And so there's piece of elements of his real life story in there, which makes it even more, you know, just a connection uh, stronger. Yeah. You mentioned like his, he lives, uh, Adonis lives in this incredible mansion. Basically it's like all, it feels like it's all mirrors or all windows. Made, and even the floors are earthy. Yeah. I mean, so like, how did, how much of a challenge was that to present to you? Or like, how'd you kind of like, you know, like how'd you like capture that basically? Yeah. Yeah. That house was literally, uh, you know, uh, what's the name of the castle in, uh, in, you know, in, uh, Citizen Kane, uh, Xanadu. That was our <laughs> Xanadu. Um, it was literally four different houses. It was not one house. Okay. In two different cities, there was a house that we used for the rooftop scene where they're sitting by the fire. That was the same house with the pool in the beginning. Then we used the interior for the kitchen and the dining room. That was in Atlanta. And then we built on a soundstage, uh, we built the uh, the man cave where, you know, the trophy wall is and that bar and, and that whole scene. Um, so, and then the recording studio is in there as well. Uh, Tessa's recording studio, which is a, a really cool space. And, you know, it's kind of cool that she has... Mm -hmm her her woman cave in his man cave and all that stuff so did you have like you mentioned like having like the visual like different style for like the flashback stuff did you have in within the present day scenes obviously like we we're saying like adonis lives in this mansion like all these great things and then you have dame who lives in uh, in much lower class or, or lower lower circumstances right based on his situation did you were you did you approach those visually like the dame sequences separately or differently than you did the adonis ones visually Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, it's not just lower. I mean, he's literally living on the uh, margins of society. Yeah. He's in a, you know, by the day hotel room. Um, and, uh, you know, he's taking the bus and he's, uh, he's got, you know, he's living on the, on the margins below the poverty line and just out of prison. And so there was, I think the art direction uh, really, uh covered at you know some of his scenes are handheld uh that kind of thing um we shot you know scenes of him working out in his motel room with just just a tiny handheld mm -hmm. camera that we ran just chased around, let just let him work out for about 30 minutes without the camera stopping and then that's and improvise and that's how we did it. and jonathan majors is a you know incredible actor and just you know was all in method the whole time so uh it was all in character um one thing that we did do to delineate the fight so was that was all imax which is maybe that's another question but we did that was one whole look um but in terms of the two worlds like a tale of two cities is kind of what it's nice you know, i was calling it but it was uh you know, it was in lighting and it was in um, art direction and in color, but it wasn't, you know, we didn't, uh, you know, use this camera for this or that. Right. Right? It was okay. different meant, yeah. treatments, but visual. Yeah. You mentioned the IMAX. Definitely. I want to ask about that too. So like, how did you guys approach, I guess, that or like how, you know, making the fights look 
like they do. And I, I mean, like, obviously, I mean, I don't know. I'm not obviously a filmmaker. The IMAX cameras, I feel like, are huge, right? Or are they still that big? And like, how do you kind of like manage them within the ring, I guess? How did that whole work? Because it's, again, really cool. And like I said, something I've never really seen before. And it was awesome seeing it, getting to see this in IMAX was really cool. So I guess, like, how is it like, yeah, how'd you guys kind of approach that aspect? Yeah. We didn't use the actual IMAX film cameras. It was IMAX digital. It was film for IMAX. Okay. We, set, we set up the Sony Venices differently uh, for the IMAX. We Again, we use spherical lenses, which are just a little bit more hyper sharp. And uh, we went into a different aspect ratio, which is the IMAX. So we use a bigger part of the sensor uh, and film for IMAX. And um, so the aspect ratio changes, it goes to 190, um, which is just a very, uh, you know, big, tall, yeah. a little more, uh, you know, uh, a taller frame. Sure. So, and, um, it's a little more square not square um, anyway so we shot in that aspect ratio we shot for that aspect ratio and with the higher you know more pixels and that kind of thing and from the story aspect of it for you like how does it tell the story better i guess in this case or differently or like do you get more do you feel like it's getting is it give you more intimacy in the fights like what what do you what would you say um in a way it gives you the intimacy but in a way it it uh gives you more spectacle um hmm. and it really feels like an a, a moment or an event you know it feels almost like a you're in the middle of a <clears throat> giant world televised event it doesn't look like tv it looks like you know just it looks a little more hyper real um and i don't, i wouldn't say it's uh a more intimate format. I don't know. That's an interesting uh, uh, question, but it's uh, we photographed it in a more intimate way than you might, you know, you're very much with the boxers. Um, mm -hmm. But the IMAX makes it feel like this gladiator, you know, spectacle. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's really cool. And uh, last thing you meant, I mentioned, you did Creed two, obviously here, at Creed three. Do you have like, these are great mon. There's a great training mon. These are training montages. Are certainly part of like part and parcel of the Rocky and Cree franchise. Oh, yeah. This one's great. I just love it. I love all stuff that Mike Michael's doing, and it's in the, on like an airfield. I was just like, I'm all in on this, and it's so cool. And even like the yeah. scene where he's like like pantomiming against like the mirror. I thought was like just all of this looks great. So cool. And I guess like yeah, like how to like again like upping your game from Cree two, but like how'd you guys talk about like that training montage? I mean, this, you know, the training montage is a piece de resistance of all, you know, ro every Rocky movie has at least one or two of them in there. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's, um, you know, it's sort of a haiku within the, the piece, you know, it's uh, how do you top the last montage? How do you keep the audience engaged how do you it's like that how do you build that adrenaline to get people to you know drop them off at the beginning of the last fight completely pumped and you know the crescendo of music and boxing and um you know so we worked really hard uh to achieve that we shot it over you know multiple uh different times at the hollywood sign on the sixth street bridge which had never been shot on before which is that modern bridge in there uh you look like you're not on the west coast so i'm i, I, I know what you mean though because i remember in the movie but i'm not on the west coast so yeah <laughs> are you in are you in i'm gonna guess you're in montclair new jersey plus new, uh, maplewood <laughs> all right yeah, yeah pretty good right <laughs> yeah really good <laughs> looking out the window at the victorian houses and it's like it looks beautiful <laughs> <laughs> um anyway i uh um so the box the the training montage uh you know diamond dame is kind of he's now a the heavyweight champion of the world and uh he's you know training at muscle beach in venice 
pulling himself up on the ropes and running on the beach or the parachute at sunset. And then, you know, Michael's uh, up in an airfield pulling planes and training with uh, Lamont Crawford, who's a famous boxer, is in that sequence. And, um, you know, uh, um, Florian, the the actor from, uh, you know, Creed II shows mm -hmm. up um drago you know and uh, it's just it's it's epic it's it's just a blast and um we had a lot of fun shooting that we went up into the woods up on top of mount wilson and he's training up there and running on a road and uh you know used every kind of camera device drones planes trains and automobiles hmm. to achieve that one it was a lot yeah. of fun it's great. It's a lot of fun to watch. Uh, we have to have here Kramer Morgan, though, uh, uh, Creed three cinematographer. Hope if there's a Creed four, hopefully uh, there is, and maybe you guys are all back together on that too. But uh, it was great on Creed three. I'll see you. I'll see you in two years for Creed four. <laughs> <laughs> Be awesome. Uh, thanks so much for doing this. Thank you. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm.